Hello everyone, I am Javid Isayev, third year chemical engineering student at Baku High Roll School, group 18.1. Uh, today I'm going to talk about offshore platforms. I will particularly concentrate on components and uh, platform design. My group mates uh, will talk about other aspects such as health and uh, safety issues and different types of uh, such platforms. Before starting, let's look at what we are going to do. Uh, first of all, I will introduce uh, the definition and history uh, of uh, offshore platforms. Then I will talk about components, different parts of such structures. And at the end, I will uh, give you information about how to design them. Uh, so let us get started. Offshore rigs, also known as platforms, are massive structures which are built for oil and gas drilling out of the seabed. Platforms are equipped with uh, storage where the oil can be reserved before it's transported to refineries. Several people are working on the rigs and usually there are accommodation areas for them. I will talk about it later. Depending on the requirement, uh, rigs can be fixed to the seabed or can be floating with anchors and wires. Offshore platforms were first used in 1891 to drill, to drill uh, submerged oil wells in the Grand Lake St. Mary's in Ohio. You see uh, the picture of those times. Uh, in general, we can uh, divide the structure into two parts. Uh, first, a top side and a substructure. First of all, top side. Uh, on an offshore oil platform, top side refers to the upper half of the structure, uh, above the sea level, of course. Outside the splash zone on which equipment is uh, installed. Uh, the top side can include one or more of the following modules oil and gas treatment first. The purpose of oil and gas processing is to separate, remove or transform these various components to make the hydrocarbons ready for sale. Uh, second, oil and gas storage, offloading and export. This section is designed to receive hydrocarbons produced by itself or from nearby platforms or subsea template process them and store oil until it can be offloaded onto a tanker or uh, less frequently it can also be uh, transported through a pipeline. Then we have utility and uh, process uh, support systems over there. This part is responsible for uh, efficiently supporting your processing requirements from new installations, small upgrades to major uh, expansions. Then we have drilling facilities, uh, these ones, uh, and uh, they deal with drilling operations. We have uh, living, quart uh, living quarters over there, uh, usually comprise bedrooms, a dining hall, a recreation room, office space, and even it can uh, consist of a hospital. Uh, then we have a helipad. Uh, here, helipad is a large deck area that's placed high to the side of uh, offshore rigs. It is an important feature uh, since uh, helicopters are often the primary means of transportation in offshore drilling. There is also a flare boom. I didn't include it uh, here, but it is very important as well. A flare boom is a structure which extends typically from an oil rig. It permits the safe burning of gas uh, that can't be collected safely during extraction of oil from an offshore oil rig. It's extended away from the main oil platform in order to keep the burning flame as far as possible from the platform so that the heat and flames do not harm people, not only people, the equipment or uh, platform. Other structures found on the top side support both uh, drilling operations and worker facilities. These other structures include a series of cranes for moving large items around the platform, industrial HVAC systems to provide climate control and uh, generators to produce electricity for the entire room, uh, rig, sorry. 
there are, for example, two cranes. Cranes also uh, allow the transfer of equipment and supplies from the top side to surface vessels. Uh, worker safety uh, is also paramount uh, on an offshore oil or gas rig. Uh, emergence and safety equipment is in place to support all personnel on the rig and allow them to deal with a weather emergency, not only weather, for example, spills or fire, such emergencies. Next, uh, when it comes to substructure, it contains a deck at the top, then a jacket. Uh, steel jackets are vertical sections made of tubular steel members and are usually piled into the uh, seabed. Uh, then we have uh, pipelines. Uh, marine pipelines transport oil and gas from subsea wells to the uh, platform and uh, subsequently gas or oil from the platform to the coast for further uh, process and uh, distribution. Then at the bottom we have piles which are strong columns or posts of metal or concrete that's pushed into the ground to help or support the uh, jacket. Then a uh, very important uh, parts, for example, offshore riser systems. Offshore riser, uh, riser systems are conduits or a collection of conduits used for the safe transportation of material, primarily fluids and gases, between the seafloor and the host platform. These fluids may travel from the seabed to the platform or from the platform to the seabed. Therefore, the fundamental function of a riser system uh, is the safe containment of the fluids and gases being transported uh, through them. Uh, similar to pipelines or flow lines, uh, risers transport produce hydrocarbons as well as production materials such as injection fluids, control fluids and gas lift. Usually insulated, uh, they are usually yes, uh, insulated to withstand seafloor temperatures, risers and can be either rigid or flexible. Then we have uh, moorings and anchors. A mooring system is made up, made up of a mooring line, anchor and connectors, and is used for station keeping or floating platform in all water uh, depths. There is actually an, uh, anchors at the end of these uh, lines. A mooring line connects an anchor on the seafloor to a floating uh, structure. The mooring line can be made up of a synthetic uh, fiber rope, wire and chain or a combination of the three. Environmental factors, uh, wind, waves and currents determine which materials make up the mooring system. Uh, but chain is the most uh, common choice for permanent moorings in shallow water up to 100 meter. Whereas steel wire rope is lighter weight and has a higher electricity sorry, uh, higher elasticity than chain, which is a better choice in water that's greater than uh, 300 meter. However, a synthetic fiber rope is the uh, lightest weight uh, of all three. It's also uh, corrosion free, as you see in the slide. Uh, about the design, the design uh, modeling and analysis of today's complex offshore platform structures represents a major capital investment in offshore oil and gas production. Using advanced finite element analysis tools, we can design and analyze complex offshore structural systems with confidence to ensure compliance with industry design codes. Some integrated structural uh, modeling, analysis and simulation environment allows us to design offshore structures to meet local operating conditions from wave, uh, wind, current, uh, and even uh, seismic loads. I uh, included some uh, steps uh, how to design uh, the platform. For example, it starts with analyzing structural stress and ends with 
uh, visualizing uh, stress analysis uh, results. So uh, if you have any question, this is actually end of my presentation. And if you have any question about this topic, uh, about my uh, presentation, don't hesitate to write me. That's why I'm attaching my email address here. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. Uh, I hope you find this presentation very uh, useful and interesting.